and we are now on to layer 3 switching. Uh, so I mentioned switching operates at layer 2 and these uh, two switches we have from our previous examples uh, they are layer 2 switches. So these models were uh, they started with a 2 which is kind of the way you can tell they were 2950s so they started with a 2 they were a layer 2 switch. In order to support layer 3 switching we're gonna have to replace those so we'll get into that. Uh, so layer 3 switching is another term for routing basically but it's at it's very quick it's at what's called wire speed so uh, this is the preferred method for traversing VLANs if we have one of these uh, two of these PCs here in VLAN 2 and then these two in VLAN 3 or something like that to get from one VLAN to another it's preferred to go through a layer 3 switch because they are so fast if we go through a router, uh, the, the routing engine is, is by nature slower. So it is uh, preferred to use the switch whenever possible. Now that we have uh, economically viable and, and affordable switches uh, in layer 3, that's, that's the preferred way to go. So that's what we're going to, uh, to go through here. Uh, Cisco switches, they use uh, Cisco Express forwarding to, uh, to go from one VLAN to another, uh, which is just a Cisco method of forwarding uh, between the two VLANs. And uh, layer three interfaces, we have a uh, switch virtual interface. Well, I mentioned that, the SVI for VLAN. So each uh, VLAN that we have uh, on a switch has to have its own SVI if we want to be able to send traffic to it. Uh, we have a routed port. Uh, so each physical port uh, that's configured as a router port, which I'll show you how to do, uh, is a routed port. And uh, we also have the option for Ether Channel when we get into this, uh, which we'll have a video coming up uh, about that as well. Uh, several ports can act as one and then be con configured in various ways. Uh, so those are all different types of Layer 3 interfaces that we can have on a Layer 3 switch. So in order to configure that, uh, we're going to have to remove our layer 2 switches here so what we'll do is we'll just get rid of these two and uh, we'll just put one layer 3 switch in there so see that interesting new icon uh, that's the standard icon used for layer 3 switches at least that's what Cisco tells us so we can make this a little bit prettier and we're going to connect into our layer 3 switch. We'll start over here <laughs> so they make sense. PC1 is going to go here. Almost done. And it's okay because we have to wait for a spanning tree to do stuff anyway. So, there we go. So we're getting into this. Our layer 3 switches has booted up. It's brought up our interfaces. We're now waiting for spanning tree to finish its business. We'll go into uh, privileged exec mode and global config mode. And we'll show our interfaces. So there's our four interfaces are connected. Everything was looking good. So if we do show VLAN, we have VLAN 1 for all these. So as of right now, these guys will all work because uh, they're all in that same 192.168.2.something uh, subnet. So they're on that slash 24. Uh, they will work since they're all interconnected on VLAN 1 right now. So what we want to do is we're going to put two of these into uh, a different VLAN and with a different uh, IP scheme and then we're going to have them communicate to the others. So what we'll do is for these guys we're going to go in here and we're going to change them to VLAN 3. So we're going to make a new IP range for this VLAN and we'll call this VLAN 3 when we get to that. So we'll go in here we'll change that and we'll change the IPs too. So this is dot .2 and that's dot .3. Okay. All right, that looks good. And then these are going to be 2.1, that's fine, and 2.2. .2. 
All right, so these are two different IPs, two different IPs. Uh, so we need to configure these VLANs now. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so interface range FA01 to 2. It's going to be these two guys. We can check that by mousing over and just making sure, yep, that's 01 and that's 02. And go in there. And we're going to say it's an access port because we like to do that. And we're going to give it a, a VLAN. Actually, we have to make the VLAN first, don't we? So we're going to do, we're going to get out of here, and then we'll do VLAN2 uh, name IT VLAN3 name, uh, I don't know, HR. All right, so now we'll go back into those interfaces. All right, so now we're at switch port access VLAN2. You can see those two went, went amber there as well. So now let's go do the other two interfaces. So they're going to be interface three and four. And we'll do switch port access, or whoop, switch port mode access, and switch port access VLAN three. So we'll get out of that, and then we'll do show VLAN brief. And now we have VLAN 2 on these two interfaces and VLAN 3 on these two interfaces. So now they can't communicate to each other though because we don't have any way of getting from one subnet to the other or from one VLAN to the other. So they're, they're completely segregated at this point. So if I go into this guy and we try to ping one of the other, si one of the other sides, there we go. See, it doesn't work. So he's trying, he's trying. He's trying, he can't get to this one. So that is working as expected. So what we need to do is we need to make uh, two switch virtual interfaces, uh, SVIs, for these two VLANs to make them work. So what we're going to do is interface VLAN2, and we'll give it an IP address on that 192.168.2. subnet. Uh, so this could be... 99 why not normally uh, people will configure their uh, their switch and router interfaces at a like one of the first IPs like dot one or something like that uh, or sometimes it's the very highest dot 254 or something like that uh, and that's just so that it's consistent and uh, understandable when you're looking at a, a subnet uh, so it's most common to see things like that, where it's it's in the low IPs or the very high IPs. I'm just kind of choosing random IPs here. Uh, make sure you use some sort of standardized method in your network. We'll turn it on. We need to make a SVI for VLAN 3. And that's 3.99. And we'll turn it on. So now we have our four interfaces. And then we have our two switch virtual interfaces. So now they have an IP uh, internally for these two VLANs. So what we need to do now is let the clients know that when we're trying to get to a network that's not your local network, you can go talk to the switch which we're going to do that through the use of the default gateway. So if we're trying to get to 192.168.3 dot from this guy, he needs to know, oh, I can go talk to the switch at my default gateway. Maybe he'll know what to do about that. So you do that here in this setup. I'm going to talk to 2.99. And then same thing on this side, but since their IP is 3. Dot something, this half of the switch is 3. Dot, we're going to do the same thing, but 3.99. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So now we have this switch essentially split in half. So one half is VLAN 2, and one half is VLAN 3. And then each uh, host PC on the left or the right side uh, has their default gateway set to the SVI that we created 
on that switch. So the 2.VLAN talks to 2.99, 3.VLAN talks to 3.99. So now we have just enabled layer 3 switching. So if I go into, that's really all it takes. If I go into this and I try to ping from PC0 to PC3, See if this works. Hmm. There we go. That, that first ping always that doesn't work just makes your heart skip sometimes. So one thing I noticed, uh, you need to en enable routing on the device. On a regular router, this will already be enabled, IP routing most likely. Uh, but since this is a switch, even though it's a layer 3 switch, it didn't have the routing functionality enabled. So we configured everything right, just the routing engine internally wasn't wasn't turned on. So in order to do that, you do IP routing. So that's something I noticed uh, pretty quickly there. It was wrong. So we turned on IP routing. So we said, OK, now you're allowed to jump between interfaces. So what happens is I send a PDU from PC0, source address 192.168.2.2, uh, or whatever this is, 2.1. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the switch to my default gateway at 2.99. It's going to go through the switch's routing system and it's going to uh, determine what port I need to get to to get to th uh, my destination which was 3.3 uh, it'll do that by looking up in its cam table and then it'll send it out to uh, 3.3 and then in return 3.3 up here in PC3 he's going to send back his response uh, to my source address and that's how it traverses basically so the only things you really have to turn on in a layer 3 switch is make those make those two uh, SVIs for the or however many you need so make make a switch virtual interface for every VLAN that you want to route and then simply enable IP routing and that's basically it uh, so that's that's the entirety of turning on layer 3 switching one thing you can do which is usually not done but you can do it this way we can actually specify a specific port uh, dedicated to a single subnet. So instead of joining these two ports to a single VLAN interface, a single SVI, we could actually uh, IP this single interface with an IP address. So it would turn it into like a routed uh, interface like you would on a, on a regular router. Uh, so what we could do is, I'll, I'll show you how to do that in case you need to for some reason. So we'll go into here. Uh, this FA01, so that should be this port here. And let's take a look at what our config is right now. Access VLAN 2, mode access, all right. So I'm going to take off this config. All right, so now it's back to uh, just the plain configuration. So there's nothing done to switch port 01. What we want to do is tell it that it's not a switch port anymore. And we're turning it into a routing port, essentially. Now we're going to give it an IP address, just like we would for an SVI. So we're going to give this a an IP. And when we get into routing, which is coming up, uh, this is basically the same as you would with a router. We're just giving an IP directly to that interface, not to the uh, virtual interface. So we're going to do 168 2.100. I'll make sure I don't. If I use 99, it'll probably yell at me because the other, this the virtual interface has that same IP. So, okay, it doesn't like that. It's because it's on VLAN 2, so that's fine. So we could do, we'll just make this completely separate. We'll turn it on. now if we look at this it's not the IP address doesn't say unassigned anymore 
it actually has the IP address physically into the interface and I could now assign an IP address to the connected computer within that subnet. So that was on 4.100 was that one, so it could be 4.1 or I'm sorry, 100 is the gateway, the interface would be 4.1 for this device. So then he theoretically should be able to get to the other VLANs that we have. There we go. So no longer is this a switched port. This is a a single port that's been that's been sectioned off, has an actual IP assigned directly to that interface, and uh, we have a device connected to it. I'm talking to that interface as my default gateway, and now I can get to out any of the other uh, VLAN interfaces, no problem. And I think this was what, 2.2 was PC1? Is that right? Yeah, see that, that first ping always makes you go, what? <laughs> Here we go. All right, so that's all working correctly. So good. So that's how you would do that if you wanted to assign an IP directly to an interface. So. Uh, most likely you'll be doing it the first way we did it, where you create just the, S the SVI interfaces. You'll create these interfaces and then just assign ports to those VLANs. Uh, that's the most common way that I've seen it done. Uh, but you may need to do that on occasion. So that's how you do that. Uh, we will next go into the basics of routing. Uh, we finally hit the routing parts of our uh, videos here. And uh, from there we'll go on to routing tables and all that fun stuff.